Welcome everyone to another gathering of Titus 2 and make yourself ready. I hope you guys had a great Passover. Ours, this recording should have happened on the day of Passover, so we had to uh, cancel it, but we just wanted to give a little 30 minutes and let's start with the reading of the word. Yes. Yeah, so as everybody knows, this is the Titus 2 call. So we've got to read Titus 2. It says, but as for you, speak things that are fitting for sound instruction. Older men are to be clear minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and patience. Likewise, older women are to be sanctified in demeanor, not backbiting or enslaved to much wine. Let them be teachers of what is good so that they may train the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be self-controlled, pure, managing their household, kind, submitted to their own husbands, so that God's word may not be dishonored. Amen. That that last line gets me every time, so that his word would not be dishonored, since it was dishonored at the beginning in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. So then we go all the way from the beginning all the way to the end in Revelation. And it says, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb, the, with the wedding day of the lamb has come. His bride has made herself ready. So we have been doing that for since the beginning of this year. And um, where were we in the So in we the two? We covered safety in February and attachment mm -hmm. in March, and we're headed into separation or set apartness, um, but we were doing the mind, the will, and the emotion. So mm -hmm. we, this, today's is the mind. So I said that out of order technically, but today we're focusing on the mind when we, we've already covered attachment um, with emotions and the will with safety right or yes yes, yes. yeah so safety um, first we know yes. that's the first part of the brain right and d is kind of new to this call so we'll just kind of re re recap especially mm -hmm. over the last few months we were touching on body soul and spirit so for body we had three months that covered you know like health and diet and movement and how that encompasses making ourselves ready um, in this mentorship relationship. And then mm -hmm. here we are, we are in the soul, which was the mind, will, and emotion. And we are moving into spirit, the next chunk of uh, calls that we'll do for the next three months. So, mm -hmm. but we just kind of wanted to recap because what we're covering today with um, separ separation or set apartness is the word I use specifically. I'm like, I like set apartness and, um, but there is separation, but, um, and, and having the mind of Christ and Messiah, we were talking about how the importance of those two calls that led up to this with safety and attachment in order to attain the mind of Messiah and be operating from that executive brain, which Simi's great at this language, brain neuroscience language, um, as controlled human beings, we, it's vital that we feel safe and have healthy attachments. It's vital that we go to those parts of ourselves and deal with and dig into any deficiency to attain the ability to even walk in a life with being seated with Messiah in our minds, you know, like mm -hmm. having the mind of Christ, having that self-control people talk about self-control as a fruit of the spirit, but they're like, okay, yeah, like how? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's already 20 minutes. Goodness gracious. It goes so fast. So we're going to dive right into the mind today. And everyone has fallen on a different um, feast. And this one fell on Passover. So when we're talking about the, um, the separation, because we are on day um, two of creation, we did day one for the body, 
which is when God separated light out of darkness, and then we're doing two with the soul. And he is separating our will, our emotions, and our mind from that of the world. So we're separating upper waters from lower waters. And in this case, we are actually, as the month, as, as we just went through Passover, we can remember that could be a good um, reminder, reminder for us that the mind, um, they had, had a, a mind of slavery and he took us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And as he separated them from Egypt, he had to get Egypt out of them. And then having to understand how the mind works, if fear is um, being the main emotion, like when Adam and Eve um, disobey the word of God, they dishonor God's word, uh, their fear enter the heart of man. And that takes us right down to survival mode, where we need to be safe and limbic, where we need to be loved and connected. So when those two are missing, then unfortunately, we do not access that prefrontal cortex, which coming to the mind was very interesting. I was talking to Keisha uh, earlier, and it's like, am I missing this? How did I not even look into that word in the Hebrew? Because we have such a Greek mindset, and there is a word of uh, mind in the Greek, which is psyche. Um, so then, you know, I'm just automatically thinking I'm going to find it in the Hebrew, but it's so different. Hebrew mindset is more an action. There are verbs, not nouns. So you can't find a noun for mind. You find words that give you the, or, or you can find kidneys, which is interesting. That's where fear is housed um, in our bodies, but also you find in between the eyes. So when you look for mind, all you find is eyes, eyeing, and then it's like, where's the mind? But when you think about it, what is in between the eyes is our prefrontal cortex, where we reason. So that is really interesting. Let me read to you a scripture. Exodus 13, 9 says, and it shall serve as a sign to you on your hands and as a reminder on your forehead, and that will, it would be in between the eyes, that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth for with a powerful hand the lord brought you out of egypt if you go to deuteronomy 11 18 says you shall therefore take these words of mine to the heart and to the soul and it will you shall tie them as a sign on your hand again hand represents what you do um and they will be as frontlets on your forehead but that word forehead is not there that word there is eyes in the um, front list on your, in between your eyes is the literal translation. You shall also teach them to your son, speaking of them when you sit on your house, when you walk on the, along the road, when you lie down and when you get up and you remember that scripture as we do it with the Shema um, daily. I don't know if you do. I like to do it in the morning and at night. And then you we do it as we gather together on Shabbat. So thinking about that, um, that being the mind, he's literally talking about our forehead, <laughs> our prefrontal cortex. He's making sure that we understand. And that's where they put the, the phylactery, that little box uh, with the word. And uh, we put it in the mezuzah at the entrance of our house, you know, in our gates. Uh, so thinking about that, what comes to your mind? Um, Mary Kate, on how we need to separate that in our minds. What, what, what's the, how do you apply that? How do you think that would work in our lives? Yeah, like practically. Yeah. Because it's not just literal, put a box on your head, mm -hmm. not to offend anybody if they do that, but. Right. Obviously, it would be like 
doing what the word probably says, not just reading it. Because like you said, Hebrew is an active, it's a really just this whole biblical culture, his action. I mean, without like faith without works is dead, kind of like it's all about the way we live, the way we do. And I'm actually like right now being reminded of a conversation you and I have had about even having a language, like speaking the godly language, you know, we, we, Mm -hmm. this book, you know, speaking in tongues was a conversation for some, but she and I were talking about like, well, when you look at it, it talks about a language and there's this other element that you could think of it having a godly way of speaking to each other, like actively speaking life, you know, over ourselves, over our friends, like this language of God's kingdom. Well, there are some like that can operate in that on the spiritual side of it, but like just everyone can attain the ability to have godly speech and language with one another. So that was just like one practical thing that's popping Mm -hmm. in my head. Like putting this word to practice, like not just reading it, not just head knowledge, but like if it's meditated and marinated in us, we're going to do it. It's that whole Shema. I feel like Shema probably goes hand in hand with this. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's like that. Even when you think about like the prefrontal cortex, what is the what is the part of the brain when you're in survival? What's that called? Uh, the basal part basal. of our brain. So, yeah. Okay, the, so the, there's basal, which we don't want to be in. Then there's limbic, which we also don't want to be in. And then is it executive or is it prefrontal? The executive. Decided? Yeah, the prefrontal cortex is executive. Okay. But remember this. You know, there is a good fear and the fear of, you know, a lion is going to eat you. You don't don't stay there. Oh, cute little it helps monster. you act on it to get yes. you to a place of safety. So whatever, right. Yes, you're right. The healthy. But you don't live it. there. Yeah. Yes. Don't yeah. live there. Okay. Right, right, right. So it's like, if you think about it, we need to go through this process to mm-hmm. get to that place. And so these actions actually help us like drive those thoughts in our mind to be real grooves in our brain. Like when we, yes, yes. You that's taught awesome. me that. I feel You're so good. good. <laughs> we did not A rehearse plus. this. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And think about it. You know, what comes to my mind as you were talking, I was thinking of David, you know, he goes up and he says, what is this uncircumcised Philistine talking about? And you, you guys, what are you doing? What, what's going on? He's, you know, this kid with all this adult and everybody's thinking, uh, we are, you know, shaking in our boots. What are you talking yeah. about? And be- he's like, I will go. Let me go. And, and so Saul goes, okay, here's my armor. Did the armor fit him? No, it was huge. So when you're talking about how does it fit, that's what I think of. Can we use the word and let me tailor it? You know, how does it fit for me? That's why I asked you, because you have a different life. You are unique. We are all unique. We all have different lives. And okay, how does that, how do I walk this out as me in my household? How do you walk it out with your household? And so it's a try and error, you know, just like when you buy a dress, you put it on. It's like, oh, it's too big here. And like this one, I like put it on in today. And I'm like, this is too white out here. Um, But you need movement. So, you know, so you're like, okay, let me see if I put something here. And I like, oh, but I can't move. Okay, no, 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 let me change that. So it's the same thing with the word of God. We we read it, we uh, walk it out, we practice, which is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, no, that didn't work for me. I, I'm glad they worked for you, but uh, not work for me. And then we move it in a way that fits our family. And that makes you know such a big difference. And then the beauty of it, which we're on 30 minutes, um, is when we're gonna stop the recording and then Wait, we can mine talk. says it's only 11 15. we're only 15 we... minutes in oh that's right because we got in earlier yay <laughs> okay awesome um i was um we got in and it's my my clock has been running since okay uh, cool. 
cool, cool. So we're going to talk about that. It And that's the beauty of the Titus 2. It's like you, you know, when Messiah said to every single one of the disciples, what did he say? He said, I want you to be my disciple. No, he just said, follow me. Why? Because we are so used to words and we think, um, oh, I'm a student or I'm a mother or I'm a, you know, we make this compartment, compartments in our lives and we think that that's how we fit. And being a disciple is live with me. When he says, follow me, they literally left their lives and went with him. They woke up with him, ate with him, went back to bed with him. The whole nine yards, when they say they sat at the feet of Gamaliel, he, they're saying he was his disciple. He lived with him. When um, we have Hannah saying, Samuel, I'll bring him to you after I weaned him. What is she saying? He's going to live with you so that he can learn to be a priest just like you. So, you know, do we live with him? He has called us all to follow him, but follow him, not just for Shabbat or follow him, not just, you know, I read here and there and then I make the most out of it. But that's, you know, when I do my Bible thing, you know, I do my life here. It's like, no, 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 no. It's all together. There is no separation there. The separation that we're talking about this in day two is not separate from the world so that you can be all godly and don't get entangled with anything else out there. No, we live here and we are here to be image bearers of him in the midst of a perverse generation. So he's never saying just go up in the mountains and be a monk. Um, so when that happens, then we say, okay, how do I apply that in my life? Because we're all different billboards. You know, some are bigger, some are smaller, some are, you know, more visible in the middle of a highway. Some are more in the back, you know, uh, streets in a city or in a little community. We're all different. We have different personalities. And, and that's the beauty of it, that you can find an image bearer anywhere you go, because we are all that diverse. And then it's like, how do I show the father to others with my life that they would actually say, wow, I want what she has, mm -hmm. you know, come and taste that he is good. Yeah. So talking to, um, you've been doing nourished with a lot of uh, moms, your age with little ones. How does that, like if in your group, because now you're a Titus too, <laughs> to, oh. Uh, other women so um because older women does not mean at all the in age it's yeah. not just gray hair well but, it's like um, you say you always say we need a paul a barnabas and a timothy right so wait what these women that are like my age ish some of them are a little older than me but like we're all pretty on the similar season of life what would that be? yeah like, so my, no they would be my barnabas they're your Barnabas, but in um, in the mentoring arena, yeah. you're you're because, a step ahead of them. Yeah, because of you, because I've had I've had a mentor feeding me. Now mm -hmm. I'm spilling all this same. It's like I'm a little mini Simi. I'm like, well, Simi <laughs> you Simi are Simi. you. <laughs> You're an awesome you. It is cool. And I'm coming to, I'm telling this to you all. Like I come to Simi a lot and I'm like, oh, like this friend of mine is really struggling. And like this particular topic is something that we are actually talking about right now. And I'm like, we need to go back. Like before, because this is, it's a very overwhelming thing, this idea of having um, self-control over your mind or even having Christ seated in your mind. Like, I think the mind is probably the biggest battlefield for me. It has been in the past. It's not nearly as fiery as it used to be. It's a lot more quiet and peaceful because of the tools that you've taught me and a lot of that comes from the years of healing and things, but mm -hmm. that is exactly what we are kind of dealing with in our group. Uh, my she's nurse group of women that come to my home. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like when like a lot of them are finding themselves exactly how I was triggered at mm -hmm. 
a behavior your kid did and instead of responding reacting and mm -hmm. feeling really shameful and then you know self-sabotaging themselves like I failed my kids I mm -hmm. you know I hate myself like some of them are actually saying these things and mm -hmm. I've been there before and so I've been there yeah yeah and so to me, this is like the greatest gift to be like, this is attainable because they're coming to me and they're like, you're so free. Like you're happy and you laugh. Like I haven't laughed in years. I'm mm. like, put a pen in your mouth. <laughs> I'm like, put yes. a pen in your mouth. Let the body detox. You will start yeah. laughing. But, <laughs> but it's getting back to that place of being loved. And I think that's what I like about this idea of like, <laughs> even like the physical putting that word, it's like they want it in here so bad. They're physically strapping it to themselves. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about it, like letting that be at the seat of your mind, like think on things that are positive, you know, on noble, mm -hmm. praiseworthy, keep your mind on things above, mm -hmm. not on things below. And it's like, that is basically quoting this, you know, this Old Testament, yeah. it's, it's the same theme like just keep your mind on me and me and this friend of mine part of our journey with all this too is like let's try to immerse ourselves back in the garden like yeah. before religion came in mm -hmm. just his children like just his mm -hmm. baby creations not mm -hmm. babies but truly like in the sense of a baby like we were new that thing about it, that is when you're a new mom and it's just like I I am obsessed with this baby and you're so curious and you're it's like easy to forgive because it's just this little new creation yeah. before all of a sudden these like wills come out and it's like <laughs> defiance and it's like no 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 like wait, go back because he mm -hmm. he has the capability to see past this like us humans we're faulty we we don't see the heart like god does so we just see behavior and we manage it mm -hmm. but like his mind is truly so loving and we forget that because yeah. doctrine religion you know like just performance and it's like mm -hmm. truly for me my journey and what I've been sharing with these ladies, it's like getting back to the garden and going back to these places, yes. even where I've been wounded, that have caused me to be rigid or this or that, and erase mm -hmm. that and just try to find that self that, mm -hmm. that that I have to love myself. Like, yes, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you're not going to be able to love your 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 mm -hmm. neighbor as your child, your husband, your friend, right. your neighbor. How can we truly give that without like knowing that love for us and believing that mm -hmm. he feels that about us? Like it's not attainable. I love that you said that because that believing in that love from up here, the believing is down your basal and that love, there is no fear in love. So that you have to get out of those two that are good for us for a short period of time. Otherwise, they will burn our adrenals and they would keep us stuck um, if we stay in that survival and limbic too long. But when he says there is no fear in love, what he's saying, you can't live here. You have to live here. And when you live here, he who loves is perfected by love, but he who fears is concerned with punishment. So when we are concerned with punishment, we're not reasoning. That's another thing that's so important. I know I say it all the time and I will continue to say it until the cows come home, is when we ask our kids when they make wrong choices or ourselves or anybody else for that matter, what were you thinking? Because they did A, B, or C, they weren't. We don't think when we're in fear. So to ask that question is like 
what's that saying? Um, something upon injury or salt? Injury upon injury or salt, salt on the wound or something? Salt on a wound or yeah, there's yeah. that saying, well, it's like they're already hurting. They obviously know they made a mistake. And now you come and you dig your finger into the wound. It's like, come on, we don't need that. We, that's that, shame. That is, yes, that's shame. And we kick ourselves and others when we're down instead of like, Either I sit down with you and say, how did you feel? How can we get out of here? Because I'm here with you until you're ready to get out, which was what at the beginning Job's friends did. Just sat with him quietly for seven days. But then, goodness gracious, your mouth went out in shame and you should have and you could have and you didn't. And, and then that whole thing that we do to ourselves and to others. Oh, so. Yeah. In order to live in love, we have to get out of. So let's be practical. Our brain number one question is, am I safe? And that's why the Bible from beginning to end talks about being safe in Messiah. Because we need that. We need to get that gerbil out of that wheel. Am I safe in my love? Am I safe in my love? So am I safe? Yes, I'm safe. And you can say that to yourself. I'm safe in Messiah. Second question, if this one is positive, uh, then you go into the next one. If this one is negative, there is no other question. You will stay, am I safe, am I safe, am I safe, am I safe, am I safe? And not until you feel safe, you can actually ask the second question. And the second question is, am I loved? Am I connected? And we can actually say, I am loved by our father, however you want to call him, Yahweh, Jehovah, you have a hey, however you want to call him, Abba, in Messiah. He says nothing. Romans 8, I love it. It just says there is no, you know, uh, famine, no death, no life, no angels, no demons. And it goes all over. Um, anything created. So just in case we forgot something, anything created, which is everything can separate us from the love of our father that is in Yeshua, our Messiah. So we are loved mm -hmm. and we're connected. We've been, we're abiding in the vine. We're connected to the vine. So when we say that, that little gerbil that's going, am I safe? Am I love? Am I safe? Am I love? Gets out of that wheel and says, yes, now I can learn. Now I can think. Now I can move and, and have my being in love. So, so I we question. believe that. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the girls I'm talking to mm -hmm. and I'm talking about stuck on am I love? Like, and you can say this to someone a million times, the blood of Jesus is enough. But like, if that person is so stuck in that shamed place, like, how do you help them get over that hump of I'm well, not? Yeah. So they're stuck and there, there are different things to get you unstuck. But the number one, and I say this also very often, because attachment is so important. It's, it's actually not just important, is a non-negotiable. We need it or we die. So if you had a good family, father and mother that you attach to, you still have to attach to your heavenly father. That's just packed up for life. Now, let's say you didn't have a good father and mother. I had a great father. I had a mother that loved me, but didn't have the freedom in herself to give me beyond safety and limbic. She really didn't help me develop my prefrontal cortex because she didn't have it to give, not because she was evil. So, but I had a great father. And I remember thinking, goodness, if my daddy is so good to me, so loving, I can't imagine how amazing my heavenly father is. So I've always had this huge expectation that my heavenly father was just incredible because I had a good model, earthly model, right? But let's say my husband didn't have that. He actually had a very cruel and violent father. So he had the hardest time for ever trusting God the Father because he never had that attachment being developed. That's a circuitry in your brain, literally. It's not like, oh, this 
fussy little thing up there that doesn't no it 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 actually has real estate it is solid it is there so when we don't have it this is what you do you hold yourself as many times at least morning and night when you wake up and when you go to sleep and you hold yourself because your body needs that. This was the safest place in your life when you were growing up inside your mother's womb. You were squeezed by all the organs within her body. And that was the safest place for you. You never were hungry. You were never cold. You were never hot. You were just perfect. So when you are in there, that circuitry starts developing. And what you want to say is, you are my daughter because faith comes by the hearing and by the hearing of the word. So we remember the Holy Spirit landing on um, Messiah's head at the Jordan River and saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He was just starting his ministry. He hadn't turned the wine into water, uh, the, the water into wine or resurrected anybody Lazarus or anything no performance no yeah. performance he's just he's my son I love him just like our kids we love them they haven't done a thing actually they require a lot of us they can do anything for us yet and we love them to death so it's the same thing so you yeah. hold yourself and you say to yourself Simi you are my daughter in whom I'm well pleased and that starts developing that circuitry, that pathways that Mary Kate was mentioning before. We, our cows used to go in one direction that had no fruit. We need to create a new one going straight into the word of God. So we, we repeat his word and his word becomes reality because his word is life. It's our life. It is the living word of God. It is Messiah. So when we repeat that, even if it's like, I'm not so sure I understand this. I'm not so sure I believe it or not, but I want to believe it. Help me to believe it. Help my unbelief. Remember that? Yeah. So repeat that to yourself. And when you feel lonely, when you feel just hug yourself, your body doesn't know who's hugging you. Your body actually thinks. Some the per, the word that is coming into your head is into your ears to your head is um, hugging you. So he is. I have a beautiful picture, uh, and I'll post it on Van of the word of God hugging us. And so you yeah. can have that picture in your head and just hug yourself. I'm telling you, I've done this with even men that are not very like I'm not really touchy, and, and this is this actually feels really good. <laughs> It's so. like not biohacking, but like mental hacking. <laughs> but I think we're up on time. Are we? You and I are we up? Yeah, we are. You are. Okay. So do you have any final? Well, you can stop comments? recording and we're going to have okay. a chat. Yes.